the city of angels is black and gold. You are listening to the Heart of LAFC podcast. And now, Joseph Zacker. Greetings, Los Angeles. Welcome to episode 339 of the Heart of LAFC podcast. Of course, we're going to call this, what, what? guess what it's going to be? That's right. B. Carson. Pretty simple. That's the mission. That's our mission this week. I don't care what happened last week. The mission this week, simply beat Carson. We got to get back on the road, right? Got to do our things. Got to do our work. Got to earn three points at home. That's all that really matters. All the nonsense, forget it. We got to beat these guys. Of course, we will cover the last game because there's some things to talk about with that one. As Tony rolls his eyes. There was some highlights from there that we do have to be happy about. So, yeah, we're going to cover that. Some areas of improvement, very obvious. But yeah, it's a good way to lead up into the match this week. Uh, Bam will be catching us a little bit later in the episode, probably about 15 minutes in, to help us get ready for the match itself. Of course, we've got Tony and we've got Araceli on tonight. I'm just going to throw it right over. Tony, how the heck are you doing tonight? Doing pretty well. Um, waiting, been saving up all my energy that I can that, for this game and, you know, Hoping the boys have been doing the same, um, you know, drinking my apple juice and all. But uh, so I'm excited, it's a little disappointed on the of what happened last game, but we shall see how we move forward and how we, you know, stack up against the number one club right now in the Western Conference. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, that's I'm in the same boat. It's kind of like, OK, just let's get to the game, you know. You get through the work week, you do what you got to do, right? But yeah, all minds on the weekend. You want to play the game. You want to get to the next one. Especially if there's been a loss, you want to move on to the next. Get to the next. Yeah, it's the rivalry match. But yeah, let's go for it. I'm ready. Araceli, how are you doing? I mean, I'm actually doing very well today. Um, of course, that last LUC match was just brutal to watch. Uh, well, Let's just go ahead and get that out of the way right now. But hey, if anything, LEFC 2 is still unbeaten, which of course, you know, we'll talk about more later on. But other than that, I mean, everything's been going good. Um, I think our third winner over here is finally ending and it's finally getting warm again. So yay for that. <laughs> good for you as it's raining over here on the West Coast. I don't know. We have weird, crazy weather. I'll take it, though. Whatever works. As long as it dries up in time for game time this weekend. I'll be good to go. I think Tony as well. He doesn't feel like sleeping out of the capo box. So yeah, stand needs support. And I don't think they need rain. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, if it is, then forget it. It's on. We've had some amazing rain games in the past and good results in the rain. So that works too. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Let's get right to the match itself. So we can focus on the reason why you're all tuning in anyway. Right. Uh, off to Colorado, off to uh, Commerce City, and uh, the beautiful weather in Commerce City. That actually had a nice-looking day there. We haven't been used to those road games yet. Uh, of course, team looked pretty decent from the start. They had the proper lineups. I don't think there was any shock to what showed up out there. Of course, Bogus was in this up front as your center forward. Go figure. Uh, Olvera and Buanga were your, right, your, your wingers. You had Sanchez. You had Tillman. You had Atuesta in your mid. No surprise there. In the back, you had Long, Mario, Palencia on the right, and Hollingshead on the left. So we went with experience yet again. Of course, Maurice was in the back because who else the heck are you going to put in the goal? That, that's who it's going to be. Uh, no shocker there. Now, for the other guys, they came out with a 4 2 3 1 because what is the best way to respond to LAFC? Clog the midfield, right? So that's what they did. Stefan was in goal. You had Bomb. Uh, Bombito and Maxo as your center backs, Rosenbury and Vines as your outside defenders. You had Bassett and Laraz as your controlling midfielders, Mihailovic as their attacking midfielder with Harris and Cabral, familiar face for some people tuning in, I guess, uh, on the outside. And of course, Navarro up top. So that is what they went with. Again, no shock at all. Now, in terms of the game, shockers all the way across the board here. Um, I'll be honest, I thought we were fine in this game until one major moment, and then things went haywire. So I'll throw this over to Tony. Give us the highlights and lowlights. Let's go. Uh, for it. So we got to the, went to a fast start, eight minute, freaking a Twesto with a 
very banger of a goal from the outside. And, you know, off to the races, you know, Bombito did get a goal later on in Colorado with Bombito at the 38th minute, but it looked pretty well. We were vibing, you know, Oliveira, of course, being Oliveira, missed the goal. And again, this is get the worst thing to happen because finishing is key again. And I hate to keep saying this, um, but what? The 76th minute with Miss Martinez on the field with a very smooth, just like, you know, cut through those two defenders and the first goal of the season for him. Great. But then Ish hit the fan. Um, 83rd minute, um, Milicic, uh scored his 83rd minute. And it's like, all right, cool. We're, we were tied. We can still do this. Take away a point. Move forward. Try to, like, you know, let's try to win this or try to take a point away from this in Colorado. Again, very high altitude, hard to run, especially they were saying that the whole time when it's spread out like that. And then in a very naive young move i don't remember the first yellow card the second yellow card i was like what the hell is going on martinez with a very um useful uh move kicks the ball earns him his second yellow and we're down 10 men and not even four minutes later molojic scores the dagger for us to lose the game three two um really good overall for the first 76 minutes and then after that it was just a tale of two of like what 20 minutes of play that's different than what the first the first part of the game was so uh martinez with a great goal you can see the the promise on him but Oliveira missing those goals it's like we're gonna need him because now martinez is out for this next game coming up yeah, I would be calling for a crisis at this moment. You know, this was one of those matches where we threw it away, quite literally. And it, it's more, it was less we, more one player getting into some trouble and the team really couldn't cope under the circumstances because the changes had already happened, right? He kind of just threw a wrench in the thing by, into it by having it happen. Now, how did it happen with Martinez? What? How did he end up getting the two yellow cards? Because if you watch the broadcast, they didn't even mention how he got it they just the announcers didn't even notice it until the the graphic came up to be honest and you heard the crowd kind of get ah they get an antsy when you got that first yellow card what happened so basically there's a foul deep against us he decides to interfere with the free kick he gets right into it to slow them down so they don't get a quick restart and in the process as he's pretty much standing over the ball there's a little bit of a, a shoving situation with, between him and one of their players and the ref, rather than warning or pushing him back, which you tend to see with more veteran players, like knock it off, right? You get a warning. At least somebody says something. He just went straight to the book. No nonsense. Just forget it. Here's your card, rookie. Um, and he goes back and does his thing. It was, it was really that fast. You could hear the crowd reaction because you knew something was going on. And then the kick away later, nobody's going to get away with that one. I mean, people are talking, oh, I can't believe you got right. Dude, you kick the ball away, you get a card. It's kind of the guarantee. It shows disrespect towards the official. It's a time-wasting tactic. You will always get a yellow card. If Carlos Vela did that, he'd be getting a yellow card, right? If anybody on the team gets that, they're getting a yellow card. The first card, though, is debatable. It is, right? They didn't kick. They didn't start the play. He was just standing there doing what, he, what a lot of players do on free kicks to slow the game down. And usually it gets a, you know, a piss off from the ref, right? Get out of here. Right? They wave you off. Didn't didn't give him that grace. And of course, as a rookie, you kind of you can't really expect that kind of grace. That's life. That's how football works, right? Kid learns a lesson. He learned a hard one because it cost us this game at the end of the day. Am I putting it on him? No. Guys have to do their jobs, right? They have to cover. They have to do the job. But it put us to a point where we're just trying to survive at altitude. And the guys were looking gassed at that point. Now, the other thing that we have to look at from this game is, one, dead ball situations. The first goal was a dead ball. Second goal, dead ball. <laughs> Third goal, the power of the knee. I mean, I, I honestly think that was pretty spectacular to score that way. That was It was inventive, let's be honest. 
but we, yeah, we need to do better. The first one, I think Olvera was a guy covering Bombito, which is a total mismatch size wise. I mean, just out overpowering in that situation. So he lost the battle, you know, that that's what happens. Second goal, proper free kick. Let's be real. Should Luis have done more? Probably. Was it going to go in anyways? Most likely. Uh, and at the end, it was just a, a chaos and they got us right. But at the end of the day, it came down to some bad decision making late in the game, and it cost us. Let's be honest: if Martinez stays on the field after getting us back to where we need to be, right in the 76th minute, looking like we're going to be on the right track for this thing, he was playing in a way that told you that maybe another one was in the cards for him. Before he got that card, it really did look like any time he touched the ball, something special could happen. It looked that way, just like when he was playing back home, right? There was something in his game, just like the weeks before, that tells you that there's something special there. And it's unfortunate that he got this red card because there was something special there. Tony, do you agree? Oh, 100%. It was he finally got the uh, goal to put him over the edge, and now he was like, you know, full stride, full confidence, and you know, a little swagger to him, but it, again, young, dumb, and uh, immature, you know, maybe years later. Again, you never know how a player develops with attitude-wise, so maybe, like, an older, mature Martinez doesn't get maybe the first yellow card or the second one, but still, it's it was a, like I said, it was a dagger to the game because after that, it just kind of went downhill. Uh, yeah, I mean, both cheap cards. Not cheap because the ref gave them, cheap because you, you kind of gave one up easy there. It's the it's a decision that you make. It has nothing to do with like the impact of the game itself. It's a personal decision that you make. And that that's an experience. That's that that double-edged sword of having highly skilled players and very young players, right? Yeah, the promise is there, but man, there's always that that moment, right? They could lose their nerve. Uh, Aricella, your thoughts on, on, of course, the Martinez situation and, and overall, should we be uh, ringing the alarm bells here or go like, hey, man, we just let one get away? I, I think it's still a little too early to start ringing any alarm bells just yet, obviously. Like, I, I don't want to necessarily um, call it a silly mistake by any means, but unfortunately, you know, given his age, given his maturity level, it, this might be one of those rare occasions where it's just kind of a slap on the wrist of, hey, don't do that again and pray that he doesn't. Otherwise, I, I'm really not sure what the solution could be at this point. And I'll be honest, normally I'm always the one to say that I'm disappointed to work during, you know, the LEC matches. But I think this is one of those rare cases where I was glad to work <laughs> <laughs> because I tuned in roughly uh after the second half started, just in time to see the rise and fall of Martinez, if you will. And as you both mentioned, right after that, it just escalated very quickly. So to kind of go back to my original answer with Martinez, you would hope that he learns from these mistakes sooner than later, but it's just unfortunate when you see them happen because they're so easily unavoidable. They're easily avoidable and that game it could have easily ended in a draw if anything but hey i I'd rather have them lose points now than in september if that, there's a server lining i there there is that side of it right you had the bad loss it was a tough break you know why it happened it wasn't that you got played off the field right it wasn't there was this, an issue with the system there wasn't an issue with the players overall or general attitude of the team it wasn't that. It was a moment, a moment that defined it. There's a resilience required. Yes, but you're down a man on the road after a moment where it looked like the momentum was heading your way and it drastically changes on you. And this happens. What I hope is they build on this. Get angry. Get mad about the situation. Support your young player, right? All of you. And you, they, they will. I know how they are. But use this, learn from it, build from it, get mad for this weekend. That's probably the best thing you possibly do is, say, all right, we did it. 
that's the worst that can happen. Let's move on and move forward. We know what we're we know what we're really made of, and we'll get the job done. All right, before we move on from this, we do have Bam on here. Let's get him on as well. I'm sure he's got his he's got his take on this thing as well. So here we go. Bam, how are you doing tonight? Not, not too bad. Sorry for being a little bit late, but traffic and last job went a bit work, late at work. Oh, yeah. So we are talking about Martinez and his youthful indiscretion. Uh, and, of course, the result is self. So if you were going to give a, a take on this match, what would you say? For me, it shows you how much one thing can change the game. That's the best way to take it. One little thing that we rolled in a second yellow, which meant he got sent off, which turns on to us copying a goal. That shows you how little, how big a little thing can be in this game. That being said, though, all credit to Colorado. They did what they had to do. They took their chances. I hate to say it, but we need to start taking chances like they do and that way we'll be winning more games finishing off dead ball opportunities it's kind of a big deal right a real big deal and and we you got to say this as well for Mihailovic this was really his breakout right he's kind of had a slow start with these guys and this was really a big one for him and you were expecting it from him it was going to come right it's just yeah he, he took advantage of the situation that he had and he capitalized Congrats to them on the day. I can't wait to play them back at our house because they won't be as pretty. That's for sure. All right. So I do see some comments on there. I'm going to save it for a little bit longer for you guys for sure. Um, I think it's time probably to move on to a little happy news. Let's we'll stick with the football and actually shift this one over to Araceli. How is life with LAFC 2? <laughs> well, I'll admit, life is fair, uh, far better with LAFC 2 thus far. The kids remain undefeated after winning the shootout in uh, Colorado. Um, first off, I, I will admit it was Easter. I had the day off, so I did not have a chance to really watch the match in its entirety, but I was able to kind of grab the highlights of it. Um, first, um, yes, sorry. <clears throat> In the 19th minute, uh, Musto turns over the ball in the midfield, sends a long pass down to uh, Adrian Robobo, who then um, beats the back line to score a beautiful curler and puts LEC2 up early. Um, throughout the match, it was a little, you know, back and forth. LEC2 seemed to play more on the defensive end, leading into the second half, where... Um, the Rapids had a chance to equalize after Luca Bambino, who was actually on the bench for the first team in the game on Saturday. Um, he had a hard challenge on a Rapids player inside the box. Rapids are awarded the PK. Marlon Vargas levels from the spot. And for the remainder of the match, uh, again, LEFC 2 seems to be playing on the defensive end, Try. Um, not really getting on any counters, which ultimately sends the game into a shootout. Now, a quick reminder for those who are still kind of new to MLS Next Pro, the games do not end in a draw. If they remain in a draw after the full 90, it goes to an automatic shootout, which I know LEFC 2 hasn't really fared well in the past. But thankfully for this situation, they did win 4-3 in Colorado to remain undefeated. Next up, they'll continue on the road in Seattle to face Tacoma Defiance this Sunday with a 5 p.m. Uh, kickoff, Pacific time, of course. The stream will be on the MLS Next Pro website. So as always, I always encourage all of you to tune into these games because just like how I mentioned a second ago, Luca Bambino being fresh back after playing with the U19s. We saw him on the bench with the first team. We saw him get the start with the second team. So these players, they are starting to get those opportunities, whether it be with the first team or international squads. So you're essentially watching the future. And I am not, you know, trying to hype it up than it should be. But honestly, these players have. Um, accelerated at high rates. So again, I encourage all of you to tune in to watch. 
Yeah, things are looking up. Things are looking bright. You're seeing a purpose to the squad, an approach that's a little bit different, a confidence that's very different. Uh, it, it's something good to see. Of course, Tacoma on the road, but then they come back home. And Aristotle, who do they play for their next home match? The next home match, they play Ventura, which is formerly known as Carson or Los Dos. So the Ventura Carson Galaxy Fuego amalgamation. Okay, got it. Uh, so that one should be fun. Let's be honest. I know I'm expecting a lot of our supporters to be at that game. I think there's a promotion out there for season ticket holders. Look into it. I think there's emails and all that uh, about discount tickets. Let's prepare for that one. Let's have fun at that one. Uh, make that a good turnout. That's for sure. Thank you, Aracely, for the update. Again, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to hearing all the news this season because it is looking bright. And you have, actually do see a path going both directions here of, of players that will feature for that team and get some minutes for the big team as well. So it's, it's good news. Definitely oh. good news. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's great news. And actually I do want to ask, I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch the match or the highlights itself, but in that game is when LEC2 debuted their away kits. Now I know there was a lot of discourse around the home kits. What did you guys think of the away kits? Have you had a chance to look at them? It's I have seen them. Yeah. Go go Tony. It's a double edged sword, let's just say. Um, because of the home kits of our rivals is very similar to that color scheme. So it's bittersweet. You know what I mean? Like again, everybody wants the white and gold jersey back, but again, gold can turn into another color. And unfortunately this season the um, our rivals wear a white and yellow kit that's very similar to it. So it's a, like I said, very nice kit. Unfortunately, not the season to have it at the moment. Yeah, it's a great kit. But you all know I'm not going to wear white for my team. Uh, I, it's just not. Uh, I, I, I've always felt from the from day one to stay away from that color. And you can in this league. There's ways, right? There's there's an off white, right? There's something you can get a little creative with it. But yeah, we're the team that wears black. That's what we do. We wear gold, and 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 there's gray in our color scheme. But white ain't one of them. You know, there's even red that that hides sometimes. But yeah, but it is a nice kit. I I will agree. It is very nice. Just not not the aesthetic I'm going for. How about you, Bam? What do you think? I understand what they were trying to do, but no, nah, not for me. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I would say as a good training jersey, maybe a hot day, cool on the field. Nah, not so much. Not so much. They're nice, though. I get it. I get it. Arisley, do you like them? Um, On the surface level, I do like them, but I do agree with you that given the color scheme and being a white kit, it wouldn't be necessarily ideal to wear that like at the Grove or somewhere per se. But um, if anything, I, I just like to see that they're putting more thought into LEFC2 this season compared to last season. Yeah, and they they have their own identity in a way, in a good way, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have the star on the kit. They, it looks different in the right kind of way. I actually really, really like the home jersey. I think it's impressive. It has its own look. I can see the senior team looking great in that. But it won't because it's supposed to be for LAFC too, and it's a good look, right? We get the gold stripes. They get basically black and white, right? I mean, that's what it's looking like. And that's okay. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good vibe. I think it's a winner. I think if they sold that, they'd make a lot of money. I'd buy one. Who here wouldn't buy one? Let's be honest. It's across the board. Right, Arisa? You'd, you'd buy one, right? Oh, yeah. I would buy one. Yeah. Easy money. It's sitting right there. Ah, there it is. All right, Arisa, thank you for the LAC2 update. Let's get to the community since there's so many comments already. We, we aren't going to stay away from this one. Let's get right into it. I know it's going to run into a little bit of Carson stuff. That's cool. We are going to cover that heavily. We are going to cover a little bit of community news, too. The community news is so connected to the game this weekend. 
we don't want to jump ahead with that. We want to give it its own air. That's for sure. So let's see. What have we got going on here, Faithful? Who's the first in the mix? You guys are busy out there. We've got Dave Gomez. Says, let's get this party started. David Day is calling for a 5-4 LAFC win against Carson. We got Mendo giving us the sup, y'all. Like it, man. Cool. David Day's with the bold prediction saying mocking chance of MVP, MVT when McCarthy gives up the fifth goal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mendo wondering how a McCarthy penalty versus Bwonga will ensue. I don't want to imagine it. Bwonga hasn't looked that hot. Um, yeah. But he's probably still there yet, let's be honest. Uh, let's see. Mendo says, Martinez is getting booked for that silly kick. Uh, let me throw it up here. Uh, remind me of Palacio, something that could be avoidable. Yeah, yeah, it was a youthful indiscretion. I'll leave it at that. He's going to learn his lesson. Trust me. He's hearing it. Uh, Jason Ariano, hey, there we go. A heart of LAFC veteran right there, people. Uh says McCarthy hasn't stopped a PK since the 2022 MLS Cup, so Bawanga will score. Yeah, he'll score. Uh, Jose Bernal just getting out of work, making it happen. Oh, yes. He says McCarthy will get the 32-52 Viva. Yeah, he's going to get it the other way now. The vibe I think he was going for. Yeah, he said vibe. Uh, Jason Ariano also says they should play the song Judas by Fozzie for McCarthy. Right? Right? I like, I like this from Soccer USA. Who's McCarthy? We've moved on. We've moved on. Here we go. Michael, not Mike. 805 says, Auflos Gates, Schwarz und Gelt. So there you go. Um, you put gold. I was surprised. All right. Uh, dude, love seeing the German flag back in the North End. I will say that right now, Michael, it belongs back in the North End. It looked great. I'm happy you get to wave it again. It should be that way. Um, in style, sir. In style. Dave Gomez this is the Rapids. We we let slip away. I hope it sharpens our mental focus for El Trafico this weekend. I think it will. I think it's it's a good wake up call for these guys uh, that you can't take any any lead for granted. And yeah, they're gonna come out angry. I'm sad Martinez won't be there to to school some fools, but yeah, we got other tools. We got to make it work. Uh, Soccer USA says we should never be losing to a team like Colorado ever. I'll be really honest with you. That team will at least be 500 this year. Maybe a little better than 500 this year. They have been spending some money on players. I know. It's Colorado. They have good home field advantage. Let's be honest. I think they'll have a pretty decent year. They're going to win something? No, but they're going to be competitive this year. Guaranteed. You saw it. There's something there. Oh, man. Dave Gomez says Amsterdam blacked out this weekend for sure. <laughs> the colors will run early. Yes, he'll be out there. Uh, Soccer USA says, where can I purchase a red clown nose? Oh, man. I think you can make like donations or something and get one, right? Um, don't worry. There'll be plenty on the other side that'll cover for that. Uh, Jose Bernal says Martinez should go play LAC two consequences. If he keeps this behavior. Oh, I, the, I guarantee he's going to Tacoma, man. <laughs> he's got nothing better to do. So <laughs> why wouldn't he go? <laughs> uh, soccer USA says I missed LAC two game anywhere. I can watch a replay or replays for LAC two matches. Um, there's no replays this season. Oof. It was the That's same case bad. last season. I, don't ask me why. <laughs> Man, there you go. Uh, Jason Ariana, uh, Ariana says, album suggestion for this week, <laughs> beat the bastards by the exploited. Um, you know, beat on the brats by the Ramones. What? What? Okay, whatever. Moving on. Like it, Jason. Uh, Soccer USA, there's a song by Meredith Brooks that rhymes with which. Oh, they're having fun with the songs already. Check that out. Um, oh, Sakura say any word on the arrival of Shino? Good question. Good question. I don't think yet. Right? We haven't seen it yet, so I don't think it's yet. I don't know. Uh, Michael Not Mike says, question for Araceli. I'm not going to lie, but I like the idea of Carson 2 moving up to Ventura County, close to me. Why don't more MLS Next Pro teams establish local partnerships? 
That is a very good question because I know that was kind of something new that they're working with this year with uh, Ventura County partnering with Carson and the town partnering with the Quakes. So if there's any other local uh, partnerships coming up in the future, I, I'm not aware of that, to be honest, but we're, we're still, you know, working through with Ventura County and kind of getting used to their stuff, <laughs> especially when late in April, I believe it's April 20th, do not quote me on this, when they do start playing in Thousand Oaks. So the games will be moving up there very soon. Because right now they are playing in Carson, but later this month they're expected to move up to Thousand Oaks for the rest of the season. That's interesting. Very who interesting. Do we, who do we know that, that lives up that way? <laughs> oh, we're going to have fun with that, aren't we? My fucking hometown. We, Sorry for the French. <laughs> <laughs> we won't admit where people live in case things must be done. We'll, well just leave it with that. You well, never know. But you don't say who lives there. Come on now. Well, technically, if you want to go with that, it kind of makes sense that they've partnered with Ventura County and they're going to be playing in Thousand Oaks because, um, again, history with MLS and history with myself. Uh Kobe Jones, graduate from Westlake High School, you know, when Carson was first created, you know, came out to his hometown of, you know, the Ventura County, 805. So kind of makes sense. CLU is a very nice stadium. They rebuilt it really well. So, but is it better enough that they play in my hometown? Very. It's, are my cousins happy? 100%. They're Carson's fans. So. Yeah, I'm bitters, bittersweet. I'm betting this is a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. They don't stick to things for very long. Let's be real. <laughs> and that's okay. Let them play there. Whatever. They're not used to playing in Los Angeles anyway. So why would we worry anyway? So, yeah. Uh, Michael now Mike says too many teams in LA and OC area. I agree with you. I, I still am shocked that there's no like decent outdoor sides in San Bernardino County, like <laughs> so many players come from out here where I'm at. Like, how does that not happen? It's weird. That's okay. At least it wasn't them. So I'd rather have it empty than have one of their representatives out here. So that's fine. Uh, Soccer USA is Pooj a baby Pooj or just a payaso? I mean, the dude like practically wanted to pop a champagne bottle after beating our academy side pretty payaso to me i'll just stick with that i'll rest my case on that one tony sorry jenkins come coffee uh he's again he's still young couldn't make it with a one of the biggest spanish clubs and got kicked out so uh i guess you know people can celebrate small achievements then that's where their mindset is I see what you did there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Bam. Thoughts? You don't want to know what I want to say. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. If there's a beef. Hey, Araceli, we'll, we won't put you through this. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're good. We're I good. mean, I would have played the fifth right. anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's all right. We we know. We got this. All right. Let's see. We, sit, we have that one Sith. Nice, man. Nice. All right, he says, uh, will this be the game where they start building the momentum? Any score predictions? We never do score predictions on this show because that always bites us. Um, I will say this. I think it will be the game that we start building momentum. Simple as that. We're at home. It's our house. We thumped Nashville five with five, man. We play well at home. I don't care how bad our, our lineup looks. As long as we don't play the children. We tend to fare pretty well. Uh, so why not? Why not? They now play a system that they open themselves up for transition. We like teams that do that. So, yeah, I don't feel so bad about it. I honestly don't. Others are scared. I get it. I get it. We haven't been playing great, but I'm okay. And we'll get into it more 
as we get going here. Uh, Soccer USA, oh man, what a question. Soccer USA, you love Fosters. I can tell you love Fosters. It's just becoming <laughs> so obvious to me. He says, would you rather hang out with a Galaxy fan or drink a Fosters? Well, surprising to say that because I'm drinking something else that I found in Australia at the moment. So I yeah. would rather if I hang with a Galaxy fan, I'll end up in jail. So drink fast. Uh, I've got a bit of jail drinking fosters too. So either way, I'm gonna end up in jail. <laughs> I'll just fall asleep. Oh, all, right. And burn them. all right. Here's the answer. <laughs> I'll get a fosters to give to the Galaxy fan. Yeah, I mean, I can drink a Foster's. It's fine. Not that giant bullet can or whatever you want to call it, the barrel can, but you'll survive, right? Carson fans, die of boredom. This is not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> they say three things. And it's always the same three things. It's amazing, but it's always the th same three things. Whatever. Ox is on, late of course. Says, hope all is well, fam. Hope all is well with you. Nothing but love, man. Smalls Kenobi says we're winning 5-3. He's having flashbacks of an amazing night against Carson. One of our most famous nights. And that one Sith is on saying it's Modelo time. I know there's going to be Modelo flowing. That's for sure, especially in the North End. That's what we do. Uh, that, definitely the tailgates, right? So there we go. I'd rather have a Modelo too. Foster's there's it's not even a ranked beer yeah uh all right love it guys those are the comments trust me you're gonna want to add some more in as we get on to it because it's going to get a bit more interesting as the show show develops and we start really previewing this thing of course before we get into the preview that you've all been waiting for let's organize you all for what we're going to do before the game actually begins so let's bring it over to tony for the what do you think it is community news let's go for it guys so on community news, of course, the game is coming up. Um, I guess I should say this now since it's technically um, already uh, obvious. Wear your black. I don't want to see the uh, white jerseys or the green jerseys or the any, any, you know, it's simple goalkeeper jerseys that yeah. just don't match or make any sense on the day well or look way too close to another team exactly so just make sure just you wear we black out la on this day on, on that day so uh make sure to wear your black there's plenty of black jerseys to choose from you know this jersey that i have on right now the new one that uh joseph is wearing right now the inaugural jersey the i would call it the covid jersey if you want to go, call it that one as well so there's a couple different jerseys, black jerseys you can wear. Um, or if you don't have that, wear, you know, your supporter uh, supporters uh, shirts that are black that I know many people do sell. And or, of course, wear just like an LAFC black jersey that are, is more than welcome to that. But moving forward, they are going to be tailgates. It's going to be an early one. So make sure you make out, make it there early. Um, also, fair warning. Um, be careful parking as well and make sure there is not a kind of like if you can get there early and park at the stadium, make sure you do that because of, uh, you know, Carson game. There are some Carson fans that will try to, you know, how do I say this? Try to uh, be hooligans and break into cars or break windows so uh be careful when parking so if you can make it there early or find parking in a safe area make sure you do that also do not um try to go in a group and or if you are going by yourself try to be around lafc fans because you know they're willing to you know attacks one from away from the stray so just that all but overall you know tailgates 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 um, there'll be plenty of those, uh, most likely as well. If you are not able to watch it, um, Apple TV, of course, but as well as it will be on Fox. So if you don't have Apple TV, you can watch it on Fox. It'll be free. It's one of those games. Yes, spam. On Apple TV is also the free game this week. Oh, okay. There you go. Both. Bam. So with that being said, back 
to the regular community new 3252 membership is still available um if you have not registered register as soon as possible this helps the supporters um get their numbers also help with flags uh paint for tifo as you'll soon see for other games and as well as um help for just you know overall helping the 3252 so if you have not signed up yet um the link is in the is 3252.net slash membership uh we have it shown on the screen so make sure you do there are three tiers um, each tier gets you something different i got the beanie tier so that's tier two i know joseph got the high tier which is also the clear uh Fanny pack, fanny cross pack, back, yeah. whichever you, well, some people call it a cross back. Some people call it a fanny pack, depending on what generation you are from. Um, or it's a, bu yes, it's a bum bag. It's a bum bag. Bum bag. I actually do know bum bag because there is a company out here called bum bag that does that. So, um, uh, oh, now I know where it came Love from. It. Australia. So, uh, so make sure you sign up if you haven't already. And then of course, with that being said, uh, the, Welcome for my spiel. The 2024 art show with Black Army, AIM, and the 3252 is on June 30th. Showcase how you feel with your culture is represented in the city of Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the melting pot of cultures and whether or not you were born and raised here, the city makes you feel like we belong. Painting, sculptures, photography, etc. All mediums welcome and accepted. Deadline submissions is June 23rd, 2023, 24, sorry. Um, reach out to BA gives back uh, at gmail.com whenever it is on the screen uh, for people who are watching it live or watching the YouTube replay of it. So uh, if you're willing, if you're able to uh, connect with that uh, and have some medium that you want to do, all, all proceeds go to help aim again, Vic, one of the best people we know and overall cool guy. Uh, so if you can, always a fun event. If you can to, if you can't even do a medium and want to help out, just reach out. You know, volunteers are always welcome. We always need the help. So, uh, and this is always a good way to, you know, give back if you want to. So that is one. And then the last one is uh, Unite for Women. I believe is still going on. Um, is inviting us and the LAFC community, the 3252, and at the LAFC community to honor Women's History Month. So I believe they're still trying to look for uh, feminine products to benefit East Los Angeles women's centers. What they need is pads, tampons, panty liners, toothbrushes, menstruation cups, sanitation wipes, deodorant, and period underwear. So if you can donate, donate as you can. Um, so again, this is the best way to do that as well. So, um, you know, thanks for everything that you guys can do. Um, and that is all for community news. There we go. Thank you, sir. Yes, go get your memberships, guys. Trust me, you're missing out if you don't. Um, and definitely support the community. I'm really looking for the art show. It's going to be nice. Really nice. Um, it's always a great time out. So take care of business. Let's make it happen. All right. I think we've made you wait long enough, which is I mess with them now. So it's time for the Black and Gold Vinyl Club Minute. That's right. Do we have any songs? Any nominees? I have one album I definitely would jump on. Anybody else got one? I got one, but you no? first. All right. So we always want to try to get kind of a local band for this one, right? That's the preference. So I'm just going to go with Tried and True, one of my favorite bands, and they're celebrating some anniversaries this year with some amazing albums. So I'm just going to go right back to it. Flogging Molly. There you go. Pretty simple. Um, Drunken Lullabies came out in 2002. Swagger came out in 2000. Those two albums, trust me, you'll be in a good place if you listen to them. Um, definitely the song Swagger on Drunken Lullabies is pretty darn cool. And of course, the song itself, Drunken Lullabies, is always a good way to get hyped up for a game. So that's what I'm going to go with. And yes, they are from L.A., right? This formed in Los Angeles, so it's even cooler. So there's my choice. Anybody else got one? I know, I know there were some suggestions in the comments. Who else has got one? Anybody? We're good? All right, let's get to the football then. Yeah, Shoot. right. I will let's go. Actually, I'll oh, go got a little. One. Okay, yeah, I got one. I'm gonna go. Um, very different. Very 
weird share. She's from Los Angeles, born and raised. So uh, so I'll go with her, uh, I believe, late 90s, early 2000s album with the, you know, her favorite song, Believe. Later. Yeah, later in the career. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Belief is a good thing. We need it. From, That's for from sure. that album, you could also put in Strong Enough. Are we strong enough? There it goes. If I hear that blasting at the tailgate, man, that's going to be freaking amazing. So there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to have flogging Molly beer at the tailgate as well. I'll just throw that out there. I think I'm taking that along. It's on. All right. Let's start previewing this thing. Let's get into it. I know that's what you guys come in here to do. So let's start talking about it. Yes, Carson is coming to town. Yes, Carson wants to spray champagne after six games and think they should get a supporter shield after six games. It's a little bit weird uh, for a team with so much history, but there you go. Uh, they, they're the hot hand at the moment. Yeah, kind of the top seed after only six games, but that's that. That's where Carson is. They finally have a relevant season after many in the darkness. Um, and so, yes, they have a lot of belief going into this game. Where are we? Yeah, struggling a bit. Two, one, and three record, only seven points. We have reasons, right? But last five games, again, for us, it's this up and down hodgepodge for them. Yes, they're coming off of two straight wins. They beat Seattle at home, one to nothing in a rain. I look like rain soaked uh, match. And then Kansas City, they they kind of humbled Araceli's other team um, as they gave away a 2 0 lead. Uh, and kind of threw the match away. Ugh. Yeah, don't remind me. Times. I won't get too heavy into it, but yes, that did happen. Um, and then they drew, I think, uh, St. Louis at home, Nashville on the road, maybe Nashville five, nothing, whatever. Uh, and then they beat San Jose to open things up. So every game that they win has been by a goal, been pretty close. They do score a lot of goals though, so that is working for them. The offense has found itself, that's for sure. And we, again, are struggling. But as everybody knows, in this rivalry match, records mean absolutely nothing, right? Whoever's high all of a sudden gets humbled. Whoever's low steps up. And you get these Clash of the Titan moments where we just go crazy with these dudes and get games like a 5-3. to three. Goals tend to happen. Ties not a lot. Now, if you look at the last five games that we played against each other, because that's really what I want to look at, the recent Okay, last time we played them in September, we took them down four to two. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, July, of course, we had a moment in Pasadena and blew that game and lost two to one. Um, yeah, uh, some players haven't been the same since. Uh, then they beat our kids in the Open Cup. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Uh, then we beat them in their house. Oh, yeah, that, that did happen last year. Uh, three, two, uh, that was in April of last year. And then you got to go farther back and three, two against, against them in 2022. So what does it show a back and forth? That's what it shows. Okay. They get wins. We get wins. We did get a win in their house. Things have been looking good for us. Things weren't looking good until now for them, but yes, they are looking like they're kind of on top of things at the moment figuring out what they're going to do after kind of revamping, uh, definitely revamping their lineup, adding some tools. We'll get into that. Uh, of course, borrowing or bringing in an LAFC uh, <laughs> builder, you could say, to rebuild them. So, yeah, let's take from the LAFC vibe and try to do what they do to get competitive. That's exactly what they did. So that is where we're at right now. Now, I'm going to throw this over to Bam. Looking at their roster, looking at their results, what should we expect from these guys? For me, look at these guys, look at their results, look at they're on a roll. They're going to come in full steam ahead. They, This is the MLS Cup final for them. When they play us, they always step up. They can be the worst team in the league, but they always step up against us. For me, we have to be really on our toes. Um, keep an eye out for Peck. Obviously, got to keep an eye out for Puig. And that, and obviously, I hate to say it, but McCarthy, you got to try and get past him. Yeah, and he's look, he's he's looking. Um, let's be real, a bit more competent uh, right now. Um, but he always has been. 
right? He did have one horrible goal for them that he pretty much put the ball in the net by himself. Uh, they did, did have one of those moments this season. Uh, so, yeah, uh, McCarthy is who he is. You should expect him to step up in our house. He's got something to prove as we didn't re-sign him for what he wanted. He didn't get his raise, so there's a little bit of revenge. Also, said executive definitely wants revenge on us, and, of course, they want they want blood too, so expect the fun. Tony, your thoughts on what they're doing so far? Because it's more about them at the moment than us. We know what we're doing. Um, yeah, your take? Mm, it's, honestly, it's not. It's what you expect. You know, Kuntz, you know, is a knows how to build a team, and, you know, they've – not of just grabbing old players who were prime and just focusing solely on that uh, and, you know, building a decent team around just the overall culture of what they're trying to do in the locker room. It's not surprising. You know what I mean? McCarthy again, F off. Like I get it. Go for the paycheck. I get everything that you've done for us, but there are certain rules that you don't do. There are certain things you don't do, and if you expect a warm welcome, um, you are coming to the wrong area. Yeah, this is will not be a reunion. We will not treat it as such. All good races that you have earned with us over the years, you throw in the trash when you play for a rival. Sorry. We loved you. We don't love you anymore. That is life. That is football. That is rivalry. You know that when you make the decisions you make. We get it. You need a paycheck. There's a lot of other teams in this league that would have taken him. But he made his choices. Now we move forward. Seems easy enough. Now, big names to watch out for. The ones that are really the difference makers from these guys, of course, would be Joseph uh, Paintsill. And then, of course, Gabriel Peck, right? Or Petch, depending on where you're from. Um, those guys have been very effective for them. They've come across with a couple different lineups in the lead up to this thing. The last game. Oh, and of course, uh, they, they, uh, I'm going to mess up his name every time. Uh, Jovalich, he's basically had this resurgent type of season scoring, what, five goals already this season. Uh, it's because he's getting service. Let's be honest. It, it's looking good for him right now. He's, he's getting his chances. That's for sure. He's efficient in what he's doing. We kind of knew that from him already. We've had some experience with him already, but now he's getting better service from, all angles, let's be real. Um, and it, it's paying off. That's the truth. Now, last game, of course, they got that win against Seattle. Kind of soggy match. They did come out with a 4-4-2 in that match. Uh, McCarthy, of course, was in goal. Yoshida and Casetas were their center backs. Expect that again. Uh, Yamane and Aude were their outside backs. They had Brugman and Delgado holding it down in the midfield with uh, Gabriel Peck and, of course, Pooj as your outside attacking type midfielders and uh pencil and Barry were the surprising starters for this match. Of course, uh, Jovalich came in later in the match Fagundes as well. Who's been a thorn in our side in the past too, with other teams. We know this already, um, coming into the lineup. There's more depth with this team as well. As you notice game before that, of course, when they tied a uh, St. Louis three, three, it looked a little bit more like, Oh, I don't know. LAFC in their approach in this game uh, where they had Jovalich as their center forward. Paintsill and Fagundes were on the outside mid situation or actually wingers. Um, Cerillo, Delgado, and Puj were taking care of business in the midfield. Yeah, that's right. Three. Uh, Caceres, Yoshida, Yamane, Aude. No shock there with the back line. Of course, McCarthy. You go before that. Uh, yeah, looking kind of similar uh, as to what they're approaching it. They've had some red card situations as well as Caceres got one against St. Louis. So expect him back in the lineup again now that his <laughs> suspension is done. So that is what we're looking at from them, a team that is much improved, that does score goals. That is number one in chance creation, I believe, right now. Uh, but who's following right after them? It's us. I think we're third, right, when it comes to expected. So... Yes, we're still creating opportunities, but we're not finishing them. As Tony says a million times over, we're not finishing them. Guess what? They are at the moment. There's no promise they're going to keep doing that through the years or through the season, I'll say. But they are right now. That's why they are where they are. And we are where we are. 
right, is not getting done. And I'll throw this over to Tony. I mean, right, finishing is kind of the story, and it's probably going to be the story this week as well. Yeah, it's going to be that's going to be the story is finishing, but not just of there's only two people who need to finish, and it's um, Oanga and Oliveira because those are going to be the two prominent people who are going to be the game changers, I guess, of the game. I know there's other players in LAFC that can change the game on, on a dime, but if we have those two locked in and putting away goals, then it's a different story where we're at in not in just the, the season, the table, everything. Mind you, if you look at the table, yes, we are very low on the table for the Western Conference, but we're if we win this, we're behind two points of the leader. So we're not that far behind. And yes, giving up points early is okay, but at the same time, it can bite you in the butt later on, as we saw in our championship year where that one point gave us home field advantage over going to Philadelphia. It changes everything. It does. You don't want to lose points early. We know this. We know this. Um, so that's, you know, that's the concern. We've lost some points, but this is the way to get back on track. This is it. This is the match that we have to step up and do our jobs. Am I super worried about what they're going to do compared to us in our own field? I'm respectful of it, right? They've do, been doing good, but I know we're capable of. We've seen when, when our guys are moving, they're moving. Um, nobody produces opportunities like like LAFC does. It's it's different for us, that's for sure. Araceli, you've you've seen both teams so far this year and, and, and gotten a good idea. Uh, what's your thoughts on this match and how they match up with each other? And are we looking at a shootout here or something a little more cautious? Given how LAFC has been for been performing for the past couple of weeks, I would lean more a little bit on the cautious side because just as how you and Tony have pointed out already, Kunz has rebuilt the galaxy in LEFC's image, essentially, because we've already seen the large overhaul over there, not only with the team, but with the staff and all, all throughout the organization, essentially. And after what I saw here in KC and how they were able to wipe sporting on the ground, they're, they mean business. And I agree that they're going to be looking for revenge. And we already know that these matchups, generally speaking, are already intense to begin with. And to see the strength that this team has developed in the short amount of time, it's like, look, I, I want to be as positive as possible or optimistic or however you want to word it, that LEFC has a decent shot. They will with Bawanga on top, but if they don't, if they can stop making these silly little mistakes, then it should be an easy ride. But unfortunately, given the galaxy so far, it's not. It's going to be one of those that will have you on the edge of your seat for the whole match. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. We're not focused from the very first minute and cautious from the very first minute. This could get ugly very quickly. They have the ability to hurt you. That is what they have. They have built a team that can slam you if they need to. They're capable of this. Do they slow start in most matches? They kind of do, and they build up, and they get you towards the end. That seems to be more of their vibe, right? They, they're relentless in their approach, where we start pretty strong and fade late, right? That's been the MO this season. What does that say for us in this game? It doesn't sound great, right? It means you got to finish your chances early is what it really means. And then you go from there. That That is where we're at right here. Now, the lineup against Kansas City might be something that might be a little more in tune with what they're going to do against us. Araceli, what do you think looking at what they had? Because they had, what, uh, Petch, Jovalich, Paintsill up top. Mm -hmm. You should expect that, right? Are, are you agreeing that should be their top line? No, I I definitely expect that being the top line because uh, Djokovic, Djokovic, I feel like I'm mispronouncing it. Um, he, he's been their uh, strongest player thus far. Or mm -hmm. one of their strongest players. He's finishing. He's making some great runs. I mean, that one against Casey up the middle was, was, was brutal. Um, Again, don't remind me, but yes. 
<laughs> I, no, you know, they, no, I, I he's know, getting serviced. I know. <laughs> you know, he yeah, didn't get service for the past two years. So no, absolutely. Or, or, it's just at least on for my end, at least it was just very painful to watch Sporting have a two to zero lead for more than half of the match, and then the Galaxy just turns it around in the very last second for the win. It just that that was just brutal to watch. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So for me, I, to me, I see an opening in the midfield. I just do. If they go three in the mid against us versus three, I think we have an advantage in this. Yes, they have Pooj, but Pooj is an offensive weapon. He's not two-way. Every guy in our lineup in our midfield is two-way. Am I wrong in this? They battle both sides of the ball. He doesn't. That's an advantage for us tactically. Yes, it's dangerous. But there's something there where our midfield could win this game, especially with a twist of being back in the mix. He doesn't like those guys as much as we don't like those guys. He has experience in this battle. Ilya doesn't like those guys. He almost ended up on that side and he chose otherwise. He doesn't like those guys. Bogus is familiar if he's in there. Tillman, he knows what he's got to do. He tends to have good moments in games like this, so... I think we're okay in the midfield. The matchup is there where I think we could get these guys on transition because again, they usually don't open up against us. In this case, there's going to get stretched moments. That's where you catch them. That's how it's got to be. Their back line. There's been some changes. I would expect Caceres to anchor things, right? I mean, that's who should be out there, right? I'll go to you, Araceli. You know a little bit more about them than we do. That is who to expect to kind of control things back there. Of course, Yoshida as well, right? Oh, no, absolutely. Those two will definitely anchor the back line more than anyone else will. And, and in all fairness, I'm not a, you know, a Galaxy expert, but based on what I've seen so far, that seems to be their um, their tactics. Right, right. Which then, of course, forces Avaletta where he should be in the midfield. We'll see. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I think the better story is going to be us and what we're going to field for this match. And is it going to be a surprise to anybody? So I'm going to look to you, Tony. We know Luis is in goal. Who are your center backs for this match? And who are your outside backs? Um, from see if I remember right, I think Campos has not been cleared. I know he picked up a little bit of like a hit. He's listed um, as doubtful. Yeah, exactly. So if that's going to continue, most likely, um, I'll probably do uh, Palencia, Hollingshead, um, Murillo, and Long are going to be my right. back line. Stability. Like, yeah, kind of. That's going to be as well. And again, the weak, the weak point, unfortunately, on this one is going to be Maria, especially depending which one we get with from him. It could be, you know, Maria of where he's a game you know, a wall or we can have, and then we can have the Mario where he's that, but then he has that one mistake where it costs us a goal. Most of the time, half the time, all the time, actually, never mind. I mean, let's be real. His history with, with the galaxy has been very up and down, very up and down. We have one moment that will always be stained in the memory, right back in their house. But then there's other ones where he's like a boss against these guys. So, He's going to be a big story here. How does he handle it? How does he handle Jovovich? How does Long handle the speed of these guys? It's going to be interesting. That's for sure. But I think, yeah, your lineup's with it. Uh, Bam, do you see any difference to the back line? I think it's pretty straightforward, right? No, that's exactly what I'll be going to. There it is. So I'll bring it to midfield, and Bam, you have control on this. Of course, we're going to go with the three-man mid. It's what we do. It's what they're going to probably do against us. So who do you field out there? Um, I'm going to go Ilie, Atuesta. <sighs> they're going to put Tillman in there, but I don't want Bogus in there. I want Bogus, but they're going to put Tillman. I'm with you, man. I am so with you. I want Bogus getting in. I think he's more physical as a player, and this game's going to be physical. And I think we need to bully Pooj. Let's be real. He's got to get grass stains and got to get him early. It's just uh, a part of the game. I hope Artwesta misses next game because he cops yellow this game. Earn the yellow. That's for sure. Yeah. Go do it. Take yep. 
take him out. Ha- have a week off. I- I'm happy with that. Remind him it's a rivalry. That's simple. Get in there. Get stuck in. Do what you got to do. Stay on the field, of course. Uh, but dictate this thing. They have to. And Ilya and Atuesta are more than capable of dictating this game. Without a doubt. Brings us to the front line. Araceli, who are your thoughts? What do you think we're going to see from that front line? Knowing that we don't have Martinez as an option this week. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. What are you going with? Um, I'm going with Bawanga, Bogush, and I guess Oliveira for this one. Yeah, I don't think we have much of a choice, do we, at this stage? On hell isn't listed as injured. Have anybody seen him listed anywhere as injured? I think he's cleared. Right? So you have that guy. Uh, who else do we have up top that can come in? Or the children. Yes, I know it's the children. Uh, Bring Mula. Dude, right? Like, the, the guy nobody knows comes out of nowhere and steals a game. This happens. This does happen, especially in rivalry matches. That's where the on hell effect could happen in this game. Like, this guy comes in out of nowhere. Like, Who the hell is this guy? He puts one away on you. Like, this is a thing. It can happen. They've done it to us before in this rivalry, right? Coming out of the blue with something special. Could be us this time. You never know. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you. I think that's our starting lineup. Who comes in the second half? That's going to be the story. Uh, don't be surprised if something weird happens in terms of what we sub into this game. Because, again, you have to do something a little different that they're not expecting. Tony, your thoughts on that front line? Um, like I said, the front line, it doesn't matter. Well, it matters who's in the front line. Of course, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be like, oh, it doesn't matter who's up front. It's literally, it does matter. But the whole issue that I have again is going to be finishing. If we can put away once we're there again, the final third is where we're failing at the moment. And that's what's going on is we can't seem to finish. We hit the crossbar, we hit the post, we hit the keeper but not the back of the net. Yes, Nashville, we did score five goals, but again, in that match, if you see it, there are many missed opportunities. Same thing that happened in Colorado. Same opportunities. We missed those shots. So if we can finish, we can win. You know? And because, again, they're going to be there for like the other part of the team. We're going to do everything we can to prevent them from playing their game, but if we can play and finish with our game, then it should be a win in our home. Yeah, it should be if we play our game, but we haven't, we haven't been finishing. That's the big thing. Um, Oliveira killed us last game. He had it easy. Didn't get the job done. This time he's got to step up. He has to step up. Buanga, he hit the crossbar now two games in a row, right? We need one of those to scuff in, right? You just need it. That's rivalry matches. You need your moments. Um, I go to you, Bam. I'm thinking you're going with the same starting lineup as well, right? Yeah, it's what it is. Um, hopefully, we see, might see a new face here and there that can get out there and change the game. Because obviously, with there being new faces, we as fans haven't seen them play. Galaxy hasn't seen them play. So hopefully, we get that change in there that throws them off. And of course, we do have a finisher in our in our lineup that was signed out of nowhere right you have kamara who could be your x factor in this game he's a target man that's what he does and he scores goals could you imagine if he passes donovan against the galaxy that sounds like a cool script to me it could happen legit could happen but he is the other option out there to start i don't think so uh, again, I don't <laughs> at his age, I don't think they're gonna throw him in the starting lineup and go, yeah, go for it, man. Give us 70 good minutes. Now nah, he's our 30 minute, 20 minute, go steal one, right? I think that's why he's here. So this could be that game where he does that. He he has the tools. Yes. Question. We're up, we're winning 94th minute penalty to us. Do you just sub him on to do it? I would. <laughs> I am that petty. Yes, I would. <laughs> I mean, I'm petty enough to have like the goalkeeper take it, but that, that's, that, you know, that's just me. Uh, 
<laughs> every shaking here like no yeah not the same goalkeeper not not this one i get it um but yeah i am i i would love to see him break the record this weekend that would be beautiful so let's put it out our, our supporters we've got a lot of comments out there let's hear what you guys have to say before we wrap this bad boy up and get ourselves ready for the weekend uh all right so we have oh we've got song options yes i love it guys good stuff um dave gomez has an update he's getting the 3252 membership it is shipping outside the u.s did you hear that bam did you hear that yes loving every bit of that uh we've got samuel says <laughs> got parking uh for 80 dollars for lasc people <laughs> Dude, parking is brutal. It is just ugly. We know this. When you play in the city, that's what happens, right? Uh, Soccer USA. Question one, how tall is Pooj? Question two, how tall is the average kangaroo? Uh, question three, is he taller than a tall can of Foster's? I just had to throw that in there. He didn't say that, but um, it would. I'd say a rock wallaby is taller than he's. I mean, we got some guys that aren't so big either, so it's kind of. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jose Bernal has a choice. He wants uh, Lachona by Tucanes de Tijuana. There you go. There you go. Are they playing the LA County Fair? I think they are. Just throw that out there. Um, Saki will say if, if Pooj happens to score, can we play Baby Shark? Uh, I don't plan on not even worrying about that situation. It's not something that's planning on crossing my mind. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> Dave Gomez, who's starting up top for this match? We got that covered. We definitely got that covered, Dave. Uh, Soccer USA says, will the fans ever allow an ex-LAFC player to go to Carson and then come back? No. No. I'm so happy we haven't broke tradition yet. Put it and, this and way. Allowed anyone from there? Yes. Question for for you and Tony, and for everyone in the chat. What do you draw your line? Me personally, if they've gone through like the under 15s under seventeen academies, that's fine. They play one game for the top team. No. Nah. If they play for Ventura, whatever, whatever. Nah. What about that? No. Too late? No. Pro Too contract? Late. Done. Pro contract. Wow. Okay. All right. If they, if they play the under 15s, under 17s, I'm fine with that. The moment they have a pro contract and play a professional game, that's where I draw the line. What about you, boys? Ooh, yeah. Um, I got to say it depends on age of player. Play for the senior side. We're done. We're done. Ventura is a gray area, right? Some kids just break through, right? But... Yeah, top side, you're done. That ain't happening. Tony? I'm going to say a hard no. It's uh, like Ventura, I understand. Like, you know, you have to start somewhere in the academy. It happens with teams all over the world. But uh, it's, I don't know. We haven't crossed anyone crossing their line to us yet. So we don't even know. Um, again, it hasn't gone to the point where it's been a big player transferring like the other the other teams in the leagues where it's been a big player, a prominent player from for one team going to the rival. So we haven't had that. We've had mid-level or just bottom dwellers switch sides here and there, but nothing crazy like that. Let's hope we never get there. <laughs> just, yeah, I, I like the separation. I know, I know. Uh, Soccer USA is throwing up another question. All right, serious question. Which LFC player will unexpectedly have a major impact on the game or which potential sub? I'll go Bam first on this one. Duenas. Remember the last time, if we have a flashback, Duenas played against the Galaxy. He was the one responsible for us losing the match at the Rose Bowl. Not his fault. Playing out of position. I told you guys how mad I was when that happened to him. That would be a nice return. Yeah, that would be a lovely return if that happened, right? Like, I got you back. That would be pretty cool. Um, 
I'll throw it out there again. A brace from Kamara, the Cal State University Dominguez Hills legend. Oh yeah, where's that university at, Tony? Um, Los Angeles. What Is clown it... circus takes up their parking lot? <sighs> Carson. Oh, yeah, Carson. There it is. Okay, yeah. So, yes, he's a legend from Cal State Dominguez Hills. Never played for the Galaxy, thank goodness. And this is kind of a homecoming. So, him to get a brace in front of his family and to break a record, that would be my kind of moment. And honestly, I think the entire league outside of Carson would probably root for that because everyone loves Mr. Kamara. Right, Araceli? He's probably one of those well-loved players around the league. What is LAFC? Isn't LAFC like his 11th club that he's played for? <laughs> so I'm exactly sure he's going for a record at yeah. this point. No, when it comes it to Kai Kamara, <laughs> he, he definitely has a, a strong history here in KC, just like Elie does. So to me, he is one of those versatile players. And given his connection to California, it just makes it even better, to be honest, at least for this yeah, situation. It's... It really is a homecoming for him. I got a lot of people don't understand that with him, but this is kind of his last hurrah. Mm-hmm. So this will be a great moment for him. Um, so I'd be with that. Um, any of our kids coming in late doing something special, we always want to see that. Or even better, Mario with one of those killer headers that he can do would be lovely revenge against these guys as well. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, Bam, do you know who the ref is this week? We got that one? I do. I do. All right, who we got? John Freeman. Should we love or hate this man? He's 50-50 with us. His last two games with us, we did win. We had the 5-2 win against Vancouver in the MLS Cup playoffs, and we had the 4-2 away win against Atlanta. Oh, not Atlanta, um, Austin. I like those odds. Okay, what about Carson? How's he do with Carson? Same again. He's a uh, he's 50 50, done two games for them. He was there for the 2 1 win against RSL in 2020 and the 2 0 loss away to Orlando just recently. But never dealt with our match. This is new for him. Okay. Up in the air. All right. You've got a fan in Robert Espinosa. Espinosa. He's on the Duaneus wagon. I like it. I like it. Soccer USA, what time is everyone getting to the game? When is dawn? Uh, no, <laughs> getting that out early. Um, early. Everyone get there early. I'm not saying it just because I want to see you guys go hang out at the tailgate and say hi. It's going to be crazy, right? It's a rivalry match. It's going to be packed. There's going to be a lot of white shirts paying a crazy amount of money because they're excited right now. That'll probably accidentally walk into a tailgate because they're not that smart. A um, little naive, let's be honest. Be there early so you can get caught in the, on the nonsense. Trust me, there will be nonsense. Their supporters have to be bust in, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, I don't get caught up in it. So get there early. Get a good parking spot. Enjoy the, the festivities on the day. These are, these are those special games, right? Rivalry matches. So have a good day with it. I'm sure the drum circle will be epic pre-match. Why would it not be? So there you go. Um, <laughs> Soccer is saying we designate a minivan parking lot for all the Carson fans. I'm sure they're busting in. Um, clown cars, they can go park across the street where everything is busted into. It's fine by me. Just to stay away from my car. Don't dent my vehicle. Thank you. I think that's simple enough. All right, there's the comments. Soccer USA is the uh, comment MVP tonight. He was on fire. Thank you, sir, for that. Um, For the rest of you, excellent song choices as well. Good on you, LAOC faithful. Of course, that brings us to our moment. Yes, final comments, reflections, our chance to say goodbye in the best style we possibly can. And, of course, Keeping it golden like we always do. I'm going to go with Bam first, since you were the last on. Uh, go for it. Um, again, everyone that's going to the game, remember, as I always say, don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Um, look out for your mates. You know, it, it is a rivalry game, so this one's very, very important to look out for your mates. Use a buddy system, especially if you're going to live in a tailgating area or that all that time stuff. Use a base system. Make up for that. Um, 
again, I'll harp on about it. I always harp on about it. Mental health is hugely important. Conversations can save a life. Remember, it's okay to not be okay. Um, I went through some just recently. I reached out to some mates. They all helped me out. So conversations can save a life. Just a phone call, a text, go hang out, go play some video games with each other. And that's where you go too. With that note, Tony? Um, again, just show up all black. There's no white in this North End or the stadium, unless you're a Carson fan, then I, why are you listening to this podcast and welcome? But overall, just be safe and um, watch out for your mates. Simple enough. Simple enough. Araceli. Same as always with any home game. Honestly, just don't be stupid, really. There's. There, there's just so much going on with this. Like we've already mentioned on here, these matches can be very intense, especially with fo- both fan bases together. So please watch out for each other. Don't drink and drive, as Bam said. Always have a second option, whether that's a friend, or an Uber, a bus, something. And again, and as always, I can never emphasize this enough, but just please be respectful of each other re- even regardless of the situation. The league is watching. The world is watching. Just be on your best behavior, honestly. Staying golden is something we always preach. As Araceli says, be on your best behavior. This is one of those moments. Here's the deal. What are we known for as LAFC supporters? What do we want to be known for as LAFC supporters? These really are the games that define us. They define our team. They define us in the stands. They define us outside of the stands outside. These are the games. What do you want to be known for? Passion, right? Representing your city, representing your colors, doing it in style, doing it better than anybody else ever has. That's what we do when we're our best, right? So don't fall for it. Don't get egged on. We don't need to see cracking coolers all over the place. We don't need to see all the, the egg on videos and all that nonsense, Nah, we need to go support our team. We need to sing like we've never sung before. Give everything you possibly have for 90 minutes. Let it rip. That's what we do best. That's what we're famous for. So we keep it up. We build up. We make history for this match yet again and keep it positive. Look out for each other. As they all say, strength in numbers is key. Not only does it keep you safe, it keeps you accountable. Be smart about it. Get home safe. Move on to the next match. And hopefully we'll be celebrating a win on our way home, right? So that is going to be the plan. If you see somebody in trouble at the game, not looking so great, maybe they had a little too much fun on the day, look out for them. Make sure they get home. Definitely do that. It's all about our community. Let's keep everybody in this for certain. All right. On that note, final word of the day goes back to Bam. Stay golden. Araceli? Stay golden. Tony? Stay golden, Los Angeles. We are. And from me to all of you, stay golden, Los Angeles. Thank you for listening to the Heart of LAFC. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. Shoulder to shoulder, the black and gold is taking over.